Oh, welcome back to big content. I'm looking at the list right now. I haven't even seen it yet. So we've got a fucking barn burner for you guys today. Uh, we got some clarity on something. You do it. Go. <laughs> okay. So I did text Nick asking for topics. I was going to say whatever. Here's what we're talking about today. Some clarity on the ESPN Barstool Pen deal. You know, only 1600 subscribers, but we have some active listeners and more importantly, some really good listeners. People have reached out and have who who I care about their opinion, who who mean a lot to me, and some people who were just like, "Hey, not that you got this wrong necessarily, but a lot of what we spoke about was rapid reaction. So we didn't have all the information. So filling in the blanks and correcting some of the stuff that, that we said, um, talking about when you create a piece of long form content, how to optimize it for short form content as well. And if you're going to spend an hour here recording that you should make sure you, you know, spend the amount of time to make sure it gets seen, which is something that we do not do enough of. That's uh, big. That's big. Cause I think that's a topic we should spend a lot of time well, on. Cause that's so relevant. Yeah, that's why it's two on the list. Uh, Your take on celebrating follower milestones, your 100K plaque is in the mail. Um, Maybe yours was earned much more than ours was, but, hey, they look the same. Uh, But I am curious because some of the the creators I follow uh, do a nice job celebrating when they hit certain numbers, a million, two, five, whatever it may be. And I am curious your take on that. We'll talk about collaboration in general. So... If you thought you're too big or too cool or it's not your style to collaborate, Stephen Curry and Paramore just collaborated, meaning there's really a collaboration for everyone. And then last but not least, and by the way, your stuff goes in the middle depending on what you want to talk about, um, but the importance of a platform. James Harden goes off on Daryl Morey and uh, you know he's able to because he has a platform that he can share. So... <laughs> We start with the big news from last week, ESPN Barstool Pen. My takeaway was the winner was ESPN. Um, the loser was Pen, and the winner today, but to be determined, was Barstool. A few things that uh, need to be mentioned. One, ESPN is more incentivized than originally. I, I listened back to the episode, and I was like, I didn't cringe at it, but I was yeah. like, we definitely don't have all the info. Right. We were just like, there's no way. Yeah. Do they have equity? Uh, Are you right about that? They, I think it's, I still don't know all okay. the perfect details to it, but it is some form of upside sharing, whether it be stock based, whether it be, um, you know, actual cash incentives, but they are totally incentivized. On top of that, my huge worry has kind of been put to bed, at least in the interim, of product and, and non exclusivity. So, non exclusivity is simply for TV advertising so they can still run FanDuel DraftKings underdog commercials on TV they don't which, they won't promote it themselves personally exactly okay. which which I actually think is perfectly fine it does not not every single ad needs to be ESPN bet they can still make money from those others which I don't have a problem with and then product wise so we talked about how stoolies refused to even use Barstool Sportsbook because it was such a bad product how they're trying to launch this fall and how we maybe imagine they would just be reskinning the app which was a big concern um still sounds like that's the timeline they don't want to risk missing football season but there was a nice little note sent from a friend who i'll leave unnamed for now but he said yes barstool sportsbook wasn't great but if you pay attention to another acquisition pen made i.e the score app which is actually the app i use for scores their tech is fantastic having used it i I can't say from their sportsbook integration i've clicked on it before it seems simple enough to use there so if they pair score product and tech with ESPN name, with McAfee and ESPN promotion. They hit the trifecta there. They hit the trifecta. And I will give myself credit because my initial reaction was they hit a slam dunk. So just wanted to, to share all that. Then on the barstool side, the non-compete, I was told, is six months. Okay. So that was my, that was like something I said. We don't know how long it was. Okay. That's not. That to me is a game changer. So they miss football season, but then they're ready to play. Another thing that I don't even know if we discuss non compete is likely only in the uh, regulated sports book category, i.e., underdog, prize pick, sleeper, 
Those companies can get in on so the So when I go elsewhere, Underdog is going to sign Barstool. Yes, exactly. Unless you get that bow tie on the <laughs> goddamn map. So Barstool, my biggest concern with Barstool was obviously Dave pouring money back into a losing you know, battle. But if he's going to be able to have supplemental gaming revenue, he's already doing the whole playbook out in public about the sales team having more pressure, cutting the fat. He's going to cut the fat. He's going to get the gaming money, uh, not from sports books, but from fantasy gaming. And it really will go down as one of the best business maneuvers of all time. So those two are huge, huge winners in this one. Uh, Penn to be determined. Obviously, they're the loser today because it was a slightly desperate move. But with ESPN committing to this, you know, with the legacy brand like ESPN, I still think it could be good for them. It's been good in their stock price. Obviously, you know, a lot has to play out there. So maybe the rare win, win, win in sports. You know, they say there's winners and losers, but maybe everyone's going to win. So I just wanted to clear all that up. Any any thoughts from you on having maybe a couple more pieces of info? Um, I think the only concern I still have is the tech part of ESPN. Yeah. I, I know that they have the score. Do you use the score app? No, I've never. Okay. Um, but I, I, I'm sure it's better. But just like the implementation of it in such a quick time period still makes me nervous. Here, let me show you actually the score app. So this is the score app, and they they do have the odds here. So like, do you think they'll just be able to bet straight from there? Maybe. Yeah, you will. Okay. Which that to me is potentially, and I use this way over ESPN. Like I I don't think the ESPN app's very good. So so use the score app actually just to check scores. scores I use yeah. Yahoo for that. Yeah, yeah. The scores better. I I like the score. I've been All using right. it for probably six seven years. And oh it's, damn, yeah. It's always been. Okay. That's why I was so excited about Barcel buying them originally or Penn buying them. And I guess it just slipped my mind that they're still in that category. But, yeah, so now definitely more bullish and happy to hear what people think. I have Long, no, no further thoughts. Okay. Long form into short form. So we just launched the Punchline podcast with Marlon Humphrey. We're actually recording on the day that Marlon has injured his foot. But, you know, all... All will be all will be well in time. Just a little unfortunate. The beautiful thing about content is the only way it gets you out of you got to die to be out of this game. You know, <laughs> that's dark. Broken thing. leg. We still on the, yeah. we still on that camera. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we recorded a pilot on Sunday or on Saturday down in Baltimore, and episode one will be going live. Hopefully, still on August twenty fourth. But the theme of the podcast is optimizing what you're doing for more than just what you're doing. So right now, a lot of what we're doing, although we got Big Don back on the clip game, but what we have been doing is... Any clips up today? We prepare for an episode. You know, I take three to four hours to prep the show notes and to think through all the topics and to text with you about how we're going to get the show on. Then we actually sit down and record the episode. Then we upload the footage into Dropbox. Then Tommy the Goat, you know, edits the entire thing. And that could be a three, four, five, six, seven hour process for one piece of one hour content, which maybe only 400 people are going to watch one week. Sometimes we get 1.7K. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big range. Don't flex on them. But what, what I did realize uh, after doing the Step X Sports Pod and, you know, what we have a huge plan to do with, with Punchline is you need to optimize that content. So take an hour and then get as many pieces out as possible. So jump in wherever you want to add your expertise. Um, I will say I saw the first clip that you did with Marlon about like Drake. And I was mm -hmm. like, this feels very much like a TikTok clip. Yeah. You know, like I thought you guys did that really well. Okay, good. So I'm actually excited that you were like really getting your hands into this yeah. and making sure that you're doing it well. Because I think it will transfer over to, yeah. to what we're doing. I think a lot of times with like... You, not you, but like people in general, there's a lot of things you, you, you just don't learn how to do them or learn how to do them correctly unless you're kind of like forced to do it, yeah. you know? And this feels like one of those things. And I, I think with the short form content, it's something that a lot of creators are going to have to be forced to do if they don't, if they want to continue to evolve. So I guess let, let me ask you, because you're, it's not like Marlon knows what the fuck he's doing in terms of like cameras and content and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So setting it up, like you pretty much had to take command here. Did you have yeah. anyone else like kind of helping you? And like, how did you go about the actual technical process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously outside of the equipment, like when you're setting shit up, you're like, okay, this is kind of my first time and make sure this works well. Yeah. How, well, how that was the intent of the pilot was <laughs> just to make sure that yeah. we get all the shots. But it, 
Ironically, it's not as difficult as you would think. Like, it's one camera with a wide-angle lens that's shooting both of us, and then it's one that's directed here and one that's directed here. You can kind of use common sense to where you want a little bit of headspace here and you want to be shooting from, you know, mid. At, but we, we did talk with people, and we're getting a lot of feedback and, you know, trying to mm -hmm. learn. I would say the most notable thing that most people probably wouldn't know just from watching the clip, uh, and if you guys want to reference it, just go to any of the socials we posted on is a really good tip I got. So the conversation happened naturally, which makes it really fun. But the hook, we actually post record hooks. So after we record for, for an hour, we Casey marked down like all the moments that he thought would make sense to run a social and then had Marlon read back, like never bring your girl to a Drake concert, period. You know, that's something that he wasn't staring at the camera saying at the mm -hmm. moment. And it, it looks very natural, yeah. but it is such like that just in itself is such a bang. And so you say it's something that you're excited for me to get into. And it's like almost you have to. It is one of those things where we've invested so much into this that it wouldn't make sense to just record for the hour or to like, it's not only that we're committing to multiple years with him. We're committing to building the podcast studio, to getting equipment, to getting a set designer, to getting, you know, social hooks, to having an editor tasked with this, to have social, to have a new logo, made, right? Like that is what comes from what I have said episodes and episodes again of like, it's almost the sunk cost where you say, I'm going to go buy the camera because I know once I spend the $400 and this is for a new creator that I'm going to just create content because I can't bear to just see it sit yeah. there and not be used. This is that on a much larger scale, but it is the, it is the way to go is to think about, you know, the long form shot, but also how you're optimizing for social. Yeah. And I, I think about like with you personally with this, like how much I, I could see like how invested you are into that. Yeah. And I'm like, eventually we're going to have to get to the point where we're doing that for this. 100%. You know what I mean? And like taking it that seriously, if we want to take it to the next level. And I almost feel like you need to go through that yeah. process for you to like kind of understand. And I'm not, I'm not saying like I understand that now to yeah. an expert level or anything, but we'll be on the same page there and then we'll be able to optimize what we're doing here. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I look at like, um, well, Don, Don's back doing clips for us. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of momentum and then it kind of like fell off cause we had things going on and I'm, I'm, I'm I'm curious, like, I guess we obviously want to be on TikTok and putting out clips at scale. I kind of feel like we're slowing, we're, we're growing at like a slow, but kind of good pace yeah. on YouTube and via like podcasting where we're getting kind of like an influx of people coming in, um, coming in each week. I guess my question to you would be like the way you just did that with Marlon and Casey, right? Mm -hmm. Like you had an extra pair of eyes to yeah. think about like this, this, and this. If you're an individual creator or if you're just us too. Like, do you pre-plan that stuff? You have the conversation and then figure it out afterwards. If you're an individual person, is is your best advice like, okay, you did it. Now let me go rewatch it, then refilm stuff? If that's the thing. It's Most really people are not going to have those resources. Right, exactly. And and that's what makes it tricky. But those are the people who are winning. And it's mostly people who are sitting. It, the recording of the content is actually the easiest, quickest part of the entire 100%. thing. It's the research. It's the planning. So I'll give a lot of credit to uh, my buddy Tyler Webb. So he's like a sports business creator. And he started on TikTok. And now he's expanding into a podcast. And I was, I was on his show yesterday. And he actually pre-plan and pre-scripts the conversation to a degree. So like when, he, instead of asking me about Barstool Pen, he's looking in the camera and looking at his script saying, here's the situation, Barstool ball, and he has every fact laid out. And I think then he can use it as a social clip because it's the same as if he were to script one of his normal videos. And then he gets my response and cuts it up to make it much cleaner. But I, I do think the, the scripting and the pre-planning and optimizing is the way to do it. It can all be done solo. It's just a it's just a commitment thing. But yeah. it's like saying, all right, I'm gonna plan for two hours for this for this piece of long form content. I record the content, I edit the content, but now I need to. Re I'll give you a perfect example. Casey, uh, the intern, as we call him, he 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 just started doing long form YouTube. Uh, so he did his Premier League predictions for the season. And then what he did was we had he had the editor repurpose, you know, in a wide shot into vertical, but segmented by the top four, which is Champions League, the bottom three who would be relegated. But he didn't reshoot 
the social hooks for social. And that's where I think he got killed because instead of going, you know, at 20, I have, let's just say he put born myth, right? He should have reshot and done a vertical shot of doing, here's who I have getting relegated. Here's who I have doing champions, you know, and then play the clip behind it. Yeah. And even that would have helped so much. So yeah, it, it's just an effort thing at the end of the day. Yeah. I kind of agree with that. Cause I think that like, um, we have Jameson doing full YouTube videos yeah. now on our channel, which is cool. And he's getting a lot of good feedback, which makes you know me feel good because it has someone else that's like in there doing some of the work with me that I could kind of like invest into and yeah. do a long term. But he was doing TikToks for us, like personal ones, one on one, and we could we take basically we have two fantasy football specific clips going live on TikTok every single day. One are me, one of JMO. JMO yeah. doing his own personal ones. And I'm like, I think JMOs are better because he actually makes them for TikTok. Whereas, like, mine are stripped from exactly. YouTube. And, yeah. and God does a great job of cutting them up and making them as, as relevant for TikTok as you can. But even even if, like, the content's not as good, it's still better because it's native for Correct. TikTok. Like, he should he should cut up your stuff and then, be and like, then Nick, send you a this. script and say, here, I need these six hooks. Yeah. Gut. Gut. <laughs> we got work for you. <laughs> We've got homework for you. <laughs> Later, <laughs> later. <laughs> but no, but it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, and, no, no. and the funniest part is that maybe isn't funny is we both know this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it's a laziness thing, but it's it is just like a what's worth your time thing. And so and so I will say what makes the Marlin stuff worth our time is because of the investment we've put in. Yeah. And because of that, this today, maybe it isn't worth our time to because we didn't have anyone clipping, you know, and even if we did, it wasn't timely and we weren't strategizing that stuff. But if as we gain momentum, and I also do want to think about um, the reason why I like doing that as opposed to optimizing the content for social. And what I mean by that is we could have a really good conversation about this and then do a hook as opposed to doing some content intentionally long form that actually makes sense. That's like a game because we know it works well on TikTok. You know, like when we were doing drafts of like our top creators yeah. like that was stuff we were kind of optimizing for tiktok but it wasn't the type of content that we thought would actually bring value to people right yeah and so that's the reverse where i think people are starting to figure out you i like can, that you can add value content and optimize for social but don't create the content only looking to to make it for social i like that you're kind of reverse engineering it and you just kind of need like the thumbnail or the hook in the beginning to yeah. make it juicy which i think is like a big part of youtube where it's like it doesn't really matter it obviously matters what the content is and the quality of the content but the yeah. packaging of it goes so far in those things i like that yeah it's good like to like you know just to give one more example we had a clip that i was going to post today but giving it a day or two to let marlin heal up and and feel better but like we talked about how the voting process for the top 100 goes because i think it's so relevant right now and like do everyone wants to know like do you actually care whatever and I didn't want to ask him just for social, like, you know, can you believe they put Kirk Cousins over yeah. Lamar? <laughs> it's like we want to have a whole conversation yeah. about it. But then after we knew that it would be a good clip, so Marlon says, here's how voting for the top 100 works. And then you just cut the conversation I in, love a, that in a way yeah. that, you know, is interesting to people is optimized for social, but we didn't have to, you know, get a hot take and be like, can you believe Josh Jacobs <laughs> was 12? Like, that doesn't, you know, it's a it's a bad way to approach it. It, it. it is. It's much easier, I think, with Casey and having a secondary piece For sure. listening. Because, like, if we were to do it the other way where it's like he has a clip and he tells me to redo it, it's like that might not happen until tomorrow. And I might be, like, wearing something different. It might be in different 100%. lighting. You know what yeah. I mean? So that, that does get difficult. Yeah. Uh, the overall thesis, though, I think I've never even thought about, but I think is really good. Yeah. I really, really like no, it. No, even yeah. that tip I got from someone, I was like, yeah. It probably makes sense to spend 60 seconds having someone read something for, for five seconds. Yeah. So uh, we're excited. And, you know, like you said, for creators without resources, it's it's more work, which is never what you want to hear. But ironically, it creates less work because you put in – why pour in four hours if an extra 30 minutes is going to make that content go the so difference. much further? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so like we said, you've got your 100K plaque on the way. When did you start the channel? What year? 
2015 maybe 2015 uh inspirational i love the slow build and i think you've built an amazing community because of that and it's why i don't necessarily want to rush big content either like we're stacking really good people who are tuning in week by week and people who are sharing um doesn't mean that optimizing and, yeah. and, and making it grow quicker would be a bad thing but we're just not in a rush there's no need like what what's there's no end goal we're just right. we're just here doing it you yeah know? i mean we're trying to help how many creators Billion, seven billion. It's gonna take a minute. We're gonna make everyone a creator. <laughs> Everyone's a creator. End of this so, hundred K plaque. I don't think you'll celebrate as much as you did about getting Dalvin Cook to the Jets. Any any part of you that will do a post, a celebration, even just send a picture to to someone who didn't believe in you. you know, <laughs> anything, anything there. Um, that's kind of funny. Maybe I will think of some people to send <laughs> that to. Uh, I guess like. The hunt, it's weird because I, I think we did make a video of this a couple weeks ago. It was like a vlog that we put out. I just literally, I was actually sitting in this chair and, and I, I made a little clip. But it, the 100K did me, it's for the first time, I think it's the first ever like vanity metric that meant something to me. Yeah. And only because it was like proof of just the work that I put in up to this point. But the actual metric itself, I like could care. I, right. I tell you when, when we hit 500K, 600K, TikTok didn't even bat an eye. Yeah. Like literally, it was just like, that's fake to me. That, yeah. that means nothing to me because I didn't, we didn't really like work for it. And yeah. it doesn't actually translate into anything at the moment. So with this, it was, um, I, I don't know if I'll celebrate. Maybe I'll fucking take a picture or something like that. But yeah. I, I, I don't know. To me, it's more of an internal thing. Like okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I think it's really, it's really, again, just a testament to what I've been pouring my like heart and soul into and it's weird because like so many people get it so easily you know and um but this one means more i yeah. i know that because of how you've built the content it wasn't quick with shorts it wasn't yeah you know you're trying to be youtube -y. you were like this is how i want to build a business and we're going to grow it quickly and those 100k are more impactful than a lot of people who are going to have a million subscribers yeah 100 percent. so it's like yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if we'll have every time um, we hit like a subscriber. So when we hit the only thing I think we've ever done when we hit a milestone was me and me and my friend Steve. I, I lived back in Jersey at the time when we hit 10,000 subs. We did a 10,000 calorie challenge. Really? <laughs> where we ate 10,000 calories in one day in a 24 hour period. Yeah. And I completed it. And What's I want, that look like? Oof, it's, it's tough. Is it? Oh, yeah, it was tough. So the first the first thing we ate, we did it terribly. We didn't really like plan it out. The first thing I ate was uh, we went to Dunkin' Donuts, got a dozen donuts and each a, and a yeah and a pint of Ben and Jerry's. Keep in mind, uh, Steve celiac has celiac disease. Didn't know it at the time. Oh my god! <laughs> it absolutely <laughs> destroyed him. Um, oh my god! So we got a dozen donuts and then a pint of Ben and Jerry's, which realistically is only gonna be like I was gonna say. I feel like it's not as many calories as no, you would and that's think. the bad part. You got to do that meal like four times throughout the day so then we went to um i think we went to like chick-fil-a i had like three sandwiches okay. and two fries say burgers feel like the so so the, so starting off with the donuts and the ice cream was it was all just sugar and fat and like destroyed my like i needed something kind of like hearty you know yeah. maybe a little protein maybe some like not something that would just destroy you. So that was that was mistake number one. Also had like a Quiznos sub. I don't know. The Quiznos has like the giant like 14 yeah. fucking inch subs. They're huge. Had one of those. Um, Dairy Queen. Is the video still up? It's somewhere on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's somewhere That's there. the beauty of, I mean, you want to talk about documentation. Yeah, yeah no, it's up there. It's up there. But the reason I, I bring all this up is because I think there is a discourse about celebrating and how I actually think that if you feel the audience right and you know, if you really know your audience, like there are benefits to celebrating it. It does give you. Because they feel like they've been along, along for the ride with you for sure. That, the fact that it just, if someone comes to your page and sees that, you know, people are engaging with the fact they're at 100K. It sets milestones. Like, I think the coolest thing Mr. Beast does is he pre-records videos and predicts where he'll be at. Like, yeah. all of that stuff does matter. And so I would say don't shy away from celebrating that. Not because you want to be humble, not because it's just not your thing, but it, at some point, like, it is a positioning thing. It is a way to kind of just get your audience excited, and uh, it, it matters. And, we, and we've been trying to think of, like, something to do for the 100K, but the yeah. problem with 100, like, every everything we think of is just so stupid. And it, like it, what? And like it needs what? to be, it's always, like, some 
consuming of something. Yeah. It's always like, what if it's always the hundreds just too many for most things. So I was like, what if we take a hundred shots of tequila? I'm like, we're dead. Like, what if we eat a hundred? Between the crew? No, no, no. It was just like me and Steve. Oh. It's always Steve. With oh, these fucking you too. <laughs> yeah. What could you but it could be anything. What could you consume a hundred thousand of? Like how no, many? Not a hundred thousand. But what literally about, just a hundred we were like, going to do. Uh, what about like a hundred thousand chips at like a Mexican restaurant? Like those are free. Hundred? Do you know how many a hundred thousand is? I mean, I eat like I would say I eat like twelve to fifteen thousand every time I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how big a serving is of chips? How many chips a serving is? Like uh, one hundred fifty calories? Probably like six, isn't it? It's the, like fourteen, like yeah, twelve to fourteen. The yeah. most fucked up thing that I was ever told is that every time you eat like uh, whatever a side of chips or something, yeah, yeah, it's like you're eating eight tortillas. Yeah, it's bad. Chips can stack up quick. Yeah. Yeah, but even like, even eating 100 chips, you're probably like, oh my God. No. You don't think you could do 100 chips? Oh, you could do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but you yeah. just said 100,000, dude. All right, what's the most entertaining? What did what did uh, Tony do? He did 50 nuggets? He got to 81, I think. Oh. 81 come nuggets. Come on. Yeah. You got to beat him. You got to show him his boss and get 100 nugs. Okay, but that's... What? <laughs> you don't think you could do 100 nugs? Uh, do I think I could? No. Live stream for charity with the audience. Like that's the thing is like charity's gonna push me. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's gonna be what gets yeah. See, get me on that like honey said, mustard You gotta edge? know your audience. You gotta yeah. know your audience. Um, no, I mean, I, I I could try it, I guess, but like, I, I don't know. If you guys have any good recommendations, you have to do something. All right, all right. You know what? I will. I will. I don't know what I will, but I will because you're doing this to me right now. What about like a hundred hours of staying awake? Be good. I'm about to do that next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking draft weekend. Right. God damn. Um, all right. Anything is that else? Is even like possible? 100 hours. Four straight days? It is. I mean, it is in times of trouble. Mother God. Mary comes. When the 100,000 plaque, when the 100,000 subscriber plaque comes in, we're staying up for 100 straight hours. 15 C4s a day. God won't even be tired. That's <laughs> <laughs> like I've been up for the last 97. <laughs> we get, do C4 will not stop sending us cases really? and cases and cases. Yeah, wow. they're on his personal TikTok now sending him shit. Really? Yeah. C4. It's pissing me off. Are they going to send any dollars? Or no, they, they won't sponsor. Yeah, yeah, they just keep sending cases. And they're like, sorry, all our budget just went to WWE. And I'm like, sorry, all your liquid just went down our fucking drain, dog. <laughs> Anything else, BDG, uh, that <laughs> relates to the creator? I know we... Just had, we're working on maybe a joint office, um, which we'll talk more about because it's not super pressing over yeah, the next. Th there's a couple weeks. things that I feel like are not really finalized internally that I don't, I don't know if we can necessarily talk about. I do think the path for JMO to get in here is maybe might be relevant because it's one of those yeah. paths where like he built out his own platform. Like we've actually talked about this where it's very hard to like make something out of a TikTok platform, mm -hmm. but he did exactly what it was where it's like he used TikTok as a, as a, stepping stone to get to a yeah. more, you know, a full-time or a corporate position, you know, corporate in a court. We're corporate now. Whoa. Yeah. If you're corporate, we're not sharing an office. What do you think you're, what do you mean? I'm not a corporate company. Oh, we are. I, no, you're we're, not. In, we're incorporated. You are incorporated. BDG media incorporation, Delaware corporation. Yeah. Mailbox in Jersey for PL, some illegal. PO uh, box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we out here. Tax evasion. Um, shit you got going on. No, but I, I just mean like you can find an employer that way through. And I almost am starting to feel like that might be like the unlock for a lot of creators on TikTok that grow a platform, mm -hmm. though some of them can probably make some money now through the creator fund. And we've kind of settled in actually. Like we, we could talk about monetarily yeah. what we've made from YouTube, the trivia stuff okay. all together. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think Jamo is a great example of that where he spent a few years at this point. He started, I think, when he got to the University of Florida. He's a senior now, so two, three, four years building on TikTok that opened the door for him to... What the fuck are you laughing at? I'm laughing at, like, you not acting or maybe not thinking about how long it takes to get to senior year of college. But you were saying that that's just how long he's been working on it. What do you mean? Like, you were like, oh, two, three, four years, like... If he's a senior. Well, I wasn't sure be, exactly when he started. That's, that's, you that's, know what I mean? It yeah, might have been freshman right. year, early sophomore. Yeah. So it was just kind of fucking. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he worked on it for years. And that got him in the door to be a creator here. And I think that would work yeah. for a lot of passionate um, sports fans, creator fans, whatever whatever you're a fan of. Like that is one actual usable, practical use case for, um, I guess, blowing up on TikTok or creating a platform in that sense. Um, just because it's, it's hard to monetize off of it. But I will say with the uh, TikTok creativity program, we had shared some numbers maybe a month ago or so. Yeah. A few before, weeks ago. before we give all the numbers, I just sure. want 
there was one thing uh, that was trending on Twitter in whatever the entrepreneur, whatever <laughs> creator economy, which was DTC brands will hire creators and they will be, you know, multiples more valuable because they're marketing they're machines. Audience. And so even if it doesn't apply to working for a media company, every single Every single DTC brand will have creators DTC and strategies. DTC means direct to consumer, yes. by the way. So, for example, uh, CrossNet, which is like volleyball for four people, like instead of hiring another marketing person who will run paid ads, they'll just hire a creator who will create content that they'll also put paid dollars behind. And so being a creator, we talked about this previously as well, is like the answer isn't only full-time creator right now. It's, you know, I guess being a creator within, growing a profile, having a stable job, having resources, and you know it's just growth. It's like talent at any any company. The value. That I'll, yeah, I also think that like you can make you don't you don't need to be a full time creator if you yeah. if you want to create like it, it's a it's a side thing as well that you can make extra money doing. Like Tony got offered, so a guy reached out to me that is creating his own like company and they're doing really, really well actually right now. I think, I think they just finished a, a raise or something, but they're looking for, he was like, we want to expand our content. And I was talking to him about it. And uh, he was like, do you have any small creators in mind that you think could be like organic to what we're doing? And I sent him over a list of names and I was like, Tony is here too. Like not really making content. And he right. was like, he looked at Tony stuff. He's like, I love, I love Tony. I think he'd be like yeah. fit the brand really well. Tony want to do it. Cause he actually Loki hates making content, <laughs> but like that was, you know, an extra little like, side piece of change he could yeah. have got just because he's like in the content environment same just thing with out casey yeah. casey right now i mean the he normally has to be sold into other deals with other people because mm -hmm. no one wants eleven thousand, you know followers in the soccer niche but people who are looking for content in soccer who already have the distribution a la like we're working with syria like they want Casey to do the content because he's creating content and they'll they'll fund it. So, yeah, creating content, having a platform, super important. Obviously. You know, what? you'd actually kind of find this funny. Probably, I had uh, someone reach out to me and he said, uh, "One, he goes out uh, a couple random questions. One, do you like Wendy's? Two, would you be available to go to this festival in September if we paid for your flights, hotel tickets, and two thousand dollars for you?" Just really? to create a piece of content for Wendy's and post on your personal TikTok and Instagram. Look at you. It's in Vegas, though. I ain't going. Fuck that. I hate you. I'm, I'm fucking out of that game. September 22nd, 23rd. That's what you're supposed to do. You stack these ops, and then... I'd rather just make stacks in my lineups on a Sunday morning. Yeah, that definitely won't be happening. All right, let's talk money, though. What do you have? Let me see some... Oh, <laughs> you fucking gold digger. Yeah, I'm a pocket okay, watcher. So, so we've... we've but, but seriously... Uh, Kevin Walsh, who, who's part of the agency and, you know, monet, we help him monetize via partnerships, but, you know, as a TikTok first creator, other platforms sometimes hold more, more value. And so now that he can, he can monetize, He's gotta he, be doing well. he commented on, on our last one that was like, or your video where you broke down the stuff. And it is super helpful because then people have different options. They know what they can, they can do. And we always do give a caution and say the creativity fund could go away at any moment. Like, I think it will. I think, it, I think it, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually, okay. So this is something I'm, I'm kind of going through right now is that, so here's like the last 30 days and this is, it's like $6,300. Yeah. And that's kind of evened out where I think like we're almost getting the same amount daily okay. where I can almost project for yeah, 150, 200, but on average you're going to make, we're probably uh, going to make between five, 55 and, to yeah. 1500 a week. And okay. So I'm like kind of now starting to use my brain and say like, okay, these guys are such a big part of why we're doing well on there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can invest that money back into them. I, I, I find it so hard personally to, to be say like, I'm I relying on that because Soon for a year that's yeah. gonna change that's, I, I, I just know it in my heart like i could feel it already being like one day it's gonna be, be taken out and i'm like man i already knew that relying on a platform for money mm -hmm. as like an income source to pay for other things was a like all you do is talk about how that's yeah. not the right way to do things and now i find myself in the crux of it a little bit okay so let me give you you know my reaction which is i totally get where you're coming from which is you know on a three-month basis all good you could you know, if this yep. disappeared, it would be all good. But we're talking about an office and then in that office, creating content that's going to try and make money off of this and then hiring these guys so they can continue doing it and, and keep growing the, the empire, the corporate empire that you're building. Looking at these numbers, so $6,200 over the last 30 days, 
So, you know, net net over 12 months, $72,000 could definitely afford full-time person qualified views, 7 million views over 30 days. So do you know what that would be on average? Like, uh, 250,000 views a day around, yeah. um, this is what's interesting to me. RPM, so per thousand views, eighty seven cents. So on YouTube it's anywhere from eight to twenty five dollars, depending on what niche you're in. And to me, eighty seven cents is it, the difference is because it's short form versus long form. Five quality. second views. Yeah. Is I think eighty seven cents is sustainable. Like like no one is sitting here being like, oh, YouTube AdSense is going away because the math is very simple. It's like if an advertiser is paying and YouTube is going to continue splitting, here's what you're going to get. So I, and me, I think that you could keep this rate up. Now, the only way this fails or it goes away is if people who are advertising on TikTok say that like they're getting zero performance from their ads. I don't necessarily see that happening. People are still spending on Snap. People so, are spend, so. What, what would you put the likelihood at? that this rate of payment is the same 12 months from now. 87 cents. Just like this. Like we're assuming our content is the same. It's getting the same amount. 7 of million views, views per sure, 30. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That Performance is, is 80, all exactly the yeah, same. Do you think we'll be getting the same, cents? same dollar amount from TikTok in one, one year? year from now? I would say that I, I actually think that yes, maybe it drops. How, how rapid of decline do you suggest it when it goes to 18 months? For well, me, it's just like matter of time. It feels like before something. See, that's changes. the thing. I actually think there's economics behind it okay. that that say now in a down advertising market where I think maybe we could be headed to, or maybe we're in, or maybe we're coming out of it. Maybe it drops to seventy cents, but it won't make sense for people to to be in the program and make content if they're gonna if they're dropping that to twenty cents. You know, so I I really think that it's going to continue. Now the tougher question is gonna be can you keep up seven million views per month, right? Over I'm, I'm curious to see how what happens months. during football season. Yeah. Because if we I mean we did all this during, you know, kind of like down yeah. months I think for the NFL season. So we'll see how long it lasts. I think we have a lot uh, enough creativity within the office that I don't think we'll, I mean, maybe views will naturally just decline over time. Cause yeah. I think that just happens on platforms, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. What I think is also interesting is like, we looked at YouTube and you, you said, you know, I think you're going to be making far more money off YouTube stuff. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to make money on YouTube AdSense. No, no. Like what is a number that we can expect here? Yeah. Because I can't tell if this is good or bad. Okay. I feel like you're excited though, so I'm excited. <sighs> Maybe. Um <laughs> but okay. you don't but you you don't want to get too excited. So we turned it on. Yeah. We turned it on and like the first like 4 or 5 days in a row, we were at like 150, 250, 300 dollars a day right. coming That's, in through yeah. AdSense. Which was a lot or a little? It was a I was I was like pleasantly surprised. I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is sick." Like over the course of a month, that's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. All of a sudden, it just drops down to twenty dollars a day for really? for like ten days straight. Okay. I'm like, okay, so this is probably the settlement. Right, now. that's when we were talking. Maybe so. Start drop down to twenty dollars a day, and then all of a sudden, like eight days ago, it just yeah. shot up. The f and so my thought process was like, okay, maybe we just turned ads on, and for some reason, it was like retroactively putting the money that we made right, prior right. to it back into it. And now yep. it's down to like 20 or $30 a day. And that's like the norm. And then like, that's a tall line at oh, the end there. This was yesterday. I'm not that's sure what, what happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, see, this is what I'm saying. Like, I don't actually know what yeah. to believe here, but so what that's what, what graph is that? How many days? Last 28 days. Okay. So 28, how many, how, what's the dollar? Uh, 2,300. And what's seven? 950. So 4k a month. 950 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have it should, it, YouTube. I'm far more excited about YouTube than I am with TikTok. That feels so much more sustainable. The correct. love that we get on the YouTube stuff, like yeah. the engagement on there is crazy. People are fiends for it. They're fiends. Yeah. yeah. And you're only going to build on top of it with yeah. hopefully yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. So I, I mean, the math is simple, right? It's like you're getting yeah, simple. a whole lot of money. <laughs> Literally. Lot, but yeah. all right. So let's say, what are you getting on a video? Would you say 40 K now or 30 K? Floor on YouTube? Yeah, probably around there. Let me I'll All right, look so, at what we did yesterday. So this this is how this works, by the way, for, for everyone out there. So thirty thousand views, you divide that by a thousand, that's gonna be your your uh, CPM or not your CPM, but you get thirty times. So for every qualified view that hits an ad, 
Like there's 30 groups that, that are going to do that. Does it tell you your CPM right now? It should. Maybe. It should tell you. I would guess you guys are going to be at anywhere from 12 to something. I'm not really sure how to find it yeah. on here. But all right, let's let's call it let's just call it 10 for for easy maths. So, if every person who watches the video makes it to the first ad at a $10 CPM, you're going to make 300 bucks a video, which I don't think is is crazy. But That's about right cuz we're putting about 3 to 4 videos a week out. But your watch time is what? Insane. 20, and, 20 minutes. Right. So those people are hitting Multiple four ads. or five ads. So that's where I, I think you're going to, I mean, you should be making at bare minimum a few hundred bucks a video, but I think as these ones continue to grow, like you're also gonna, we got, yeah, we got demonetized for a handful of them too. For what? Uh, Tony keeps putting music in them. Told yeah. him not to anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I would stop that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's one where the music isn't you not know, worth making, it, yeah. making the difference. Yeah. So, so that's with demonetized videos. Some of them, yeah. I'm telling you, you're going to be making 500 plus. A, that's why I was trying to get that equity, and you were buying Casey equity. Although he, he does owe you for the for the home run, uh, if you you know the home run parlay he hit. Oh, yeah. So you got you got your early payout. <laughs> yeah, <but> facts. facts. <laughs> the blue chip stuff. Right, I think we're even right now. Yeah, on profit. Probably, yeah. probably about even. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited because. As much as you say, don't rely on content monetization. It this is, is the first time I'm actually like low key excited about it because we can actually do things with it. Correct. Yeah, it's very dope. Cautiously optimistic. Collaboration. So you have even against your. We just your, did your will. We just did a, a collab was, yesterday. Who'd you do it with? Nerd sesh. Okay. Ever seen them? I don't know them. I saw your caps off we collaboration. Have you done any? I mean, we did Babita, or as you called them. What'd you call them? Bobito. Yeah. Bobito. Bebita. He actually just hit me up ye- yesterday. Uh, yeah, they want to do more content. Because collabs. They, oh, no. He, well, uh, yeah, I guess. He was yeah. like, do you want to help me sh- do my draft? Uh. <laughs> but he was like, we'll live stream it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I was like, nah. Okay. Yeah, you don't do it. <laughs> no, 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 I told him I would. No. I told, I told him. Um, but collaboration's key. We've been, we've been kind of harping on that. You're never, you know, you never know what it could bring to your brand. If you are smaller, like make sure you kind of have a value prop that you're going to deliver to the person who may be quote unquote bigger. And uh, I just wanted to bring up a hilarious collaboration today, which was Stephen Curry going on stage and singing at a Paramore concert. So, I mean, from a thousand feet, it's like what in the world just happened? But nowadays it. It just makes sense. Like you're just cross pollinating audiences and the Venn diagram of audiences is much larger than you would think. Yeah. I think like music and athletes are how, how feasible do you think like content collaborations are though outside of, cause I think most content creators are very in their own niche where like musicians and athletes kind of feel like they transcend a little bit where if it's like an, if it's an athlete in like a music video or something, it's really cool. But like yeah. if I were to bring on, if Mark Cuban was in a music video, it would be very cool. It would be very cool. I think there are some Mark things that Cuban transcend plays it. pickup. It's very cool. It there's no, if I, I bring like a car expert on to do a fantasy football mock draft with me, even if it's like, if, if I bring on like, you a, don't think it in it now, it would take a lot of work. A, they would have they to would be t- a monster creator for it to really push. If I found if I found like a well, tech reviewer no, who had like no. the same subscriber base as me doing a fantasy draft, I feel like it wouldn't be that good. Correct, because you're thinking what's like the home run collaboration. I'm just thinking I don't even know if that'd be a single. It maybe maybe not, but there's probably some fun ways that you could do it. All right, so let's let's. I'm just not even play sure out. why I'm pushing back on this. I'm just no no no, uh, no no. Let's just play out the the theoretical. So give me give me an example. Okay. Um, and this is a collab on your channel? Yeah, let's just say there was like a, someone who does tech reviews, right? Okay, tech reviews. Someone who does tech reviews has like 150,000 subs on YouTube yeah. or whatever. And I was like, yo, just, I, I love your um, your content. Like, I've been a big fan of yours yeah. for a while. You helped me choose my MacBook or whatever. Like, come on my channel and let's do uh, a mock draft together. Okay, so what I would do is, you know, this is on the spot, but you would probably have him sign in to his account you know let's say it's underdog or under daddy as we call them um them who should not be named (laughs) and like each round he has to make it on a different piece of tech and he's kind of like giving like the best way to draft your fantasy league and it's like on a mac Mm. on an iphone on an android it's not a perfect fit there's no doubt about that and is it but like it could go viral if you get him like to the point where he's 
then you make a mockery of it and he's drafting like off the back of this camera, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that's plugged in or something. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's there's, there's like ways to do it. Yes. Not every single collaboration, but also we're also saying like, it doesn't have to be the craziest collaboration. No, no not like at just all. go collab with so your like, friends in the industry. These are the guys in nerd sesh. I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen him. Have you ever seen this guy? He does like, he does NFL trivia. He's like sick at it. No, really, no. really good. Okay. Um, but like in their comment section, it's like nonstop, like collab with BG. So they hit us up and we just did like an hour, yeah. hour and a half long session yesterday with them. Um, really cool dudes. Like had, a, they, they actually work for, you know what the volume is? Yeah. yeah. So they, they're like one of the featured people on nice. the volume, I guess, which I had never heard of prior to yesterday. Oh my God. You do. All right. Tell me about the volume now. Tell you about it? Who started it? I forgot. Wait, hold on. I, I know this. I know this. I know this. I know this. Um, People are like, oh, these guys have good takes and analysis on the Barstool Pen deal. They're very informed. And then Nick's like, so I found out about the volume yesterday. It's this new up-and-coming media company. Who the fuck was it? Who is Colin it? Coward. Colin Coward. I knew it. I knew it. Sorry. Colin Coward. Um, yeah, they're on there. And I wanted to have a conversation more with them about that. Like, if... That's their full time thing, like what they do with the volume in terms of like how the partnership is actually structured or whatever. But that was a fun collab. I'm way more open to having collabs with like our TikTok audience and yeah. kind of expanding that way. And those have actually been like super fun. Like I love having the caps off guys in here and it helps to cross pollinate, especially like with the level we're at now. It's like the audience is always asking for it. Like they yeah. want it. They love the collabs. And it's almost like when you, you see you, back in the day when you'd watch TV shows and they would like randomly have like <laughs> yeah. crossing characters yeah. on TV shows. You're like, Oh my God, that was an epic kind of thing. That's, I mean, TikTok yeah, is almost like the action. modern day TV show where you're like, why are your worlds collide? Like you guys are real people. Like you meet in real life. It's, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. Well, it's no, fun. you don't. Most of your collabs, I'm sure you're doing virtually. So, that's fair. <laughs> uh, I think a really good tie between this conversation and the prior one is how, once again, I'm going to load more work onto the up and coming creators plate. But one of the major things and how you can gain value out of um, a collaboration when you're smaller, trying to play with the big dogs, uh, you know, pun intended. Big dog tournament is, launching next Thursday. Is actually create content for the person. So I went on. Caps Off is the football version of the game day show, and then they have a basketball show, Hard in the Paint. And I went on the show, right? I travel to their office. I go through the show notes. I record for an hour, and then they're posting that content. But what they do a really nice job of is saying, hey, if you want to collab on this, like we'll post it, we'll tag you, and we'll optimize it for you. And and I'm like going to hit accept like 100 less, times yeah. out of 100 because mm -hmm. it's actually content I enjoy. And it's free content that I didn't have to do any of the work for. But you know what they're getting? They're getting my following. So if you are a smaller creator, that is a really good way to, you know, gain, gain, you know. And we've, we've talked about this before, too. It's like if you're a smaller creator and you do happen to land, like it's not that difficult to land like a bigger guest. Yeah. And once you get one, it becomes a snowball effect where mm -hmm. you can get another one within that person's network. Find, you know, find someone that's cool, get them on your podcast, then find someone who like admires that person. That's kind of, you know, cool, too. And you start stacking names. And once you do the content with them, make sure you do optimize the content that you clipped afterwards for this person, make them feel good, make them look funny, make them whatever yeah. the case may be upload it. They'll have no problem. Share your reverse engineering, how to get it out to their audience as well. So they do a great job with that. And we're uploading clips. Yeah. And they were like, do you want to collab on this? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like yeah. you guys are going to do the work. You guys filmed it. You guys are editing it. You guys are making me look good. Like yeah. what else? Like, can I hire you? <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm coming around to the idea of collabs. Okay. Just not with Wendy's. The funniest part is I don't think we've ever done, I guess we've been on your stuff, but we haven't done an official collab. What do you mean? Like oh, a like collaboration or Snapback? Post. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've been in, in a lot of BG content. Yeah, no, I'm saying I've been in the content, but we haven't done like a... Um, like what would an idea for that be? No, I'm talking about just hit the collab button like you did with uh, oh, <laughs> the oh, game oh. <laughs> and just share, yeah, share yeah, the love. Yeah. That's fair. Um, which I think is is one of the better tools Instagram has added. That is really cool. Honestly. I like that like, a lot. I think it's What cool. happened? To, there's a Twitter feature with that. It was. The code tweet. They just we, stopped we it did, like five seconds. Yeah, they, they Elon cut it. He they, cut Twitter, the, Twitter be doing that, bro. They just be like introducing features and then taking it away, yeah. which I kind of respect. I mean, pivot. Yeah. Pivot for sure. But I feel like some of them are cool. What do you think? Yeah, you think? I don't. I don't. I guess I don't understand why you wouldn't not like what. Why wouldn't you have that feature? Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know. I miss it. The, the I miss it so much. Yeah. All right. Last topic is the importance of having a platform. 
pretty much covered it in a variation of ways this episode talking about how to get hired by people uh, oh also a reminder to put this podcast on the big content podcast feed uh this time if you I like you keep reaching out to me where is this where is this you think i'm not on top of this shit <laughs> well you weren't i do, i was on top of the video right you reached out that yeah. was live yeah we're also put on the podcast feed yeah you know what you know what that did it made what? us get 2500 new listeners did it i mean that's what is that what that feed has that's what that episode got, I think. I looked. Really? Yeah. What's it normally get on big content? Probably like fucking 80. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm pretty excited. Yeah. You do you put out podcasts? Every video we do. We put it into you a make podcast. it into a podcast. Yeah. Literally the same exact thing. We just strip the MP3 and upload it. Really? Mm -hmm. Even a, not a vlog? No, no, no. Any fantasy. Any fantasy. Any like YouTube fantasy thing. Interesting. Oh, also, is Tony's here? J-Mo, you got to talk with Tony. About uploading your videos as podcasts onto the feed. I'll show you how to do it after. It's actually super easy. Anything we make video-wise, yeah, we upload it as a podcast. And we we don't do, like, a ton of downloads there. But, yeah. I mean, there are, I don't know, maybe episodes will get 3,500 to 4,000 downloads per ep. So, it's, like, it's way... Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, relevant to our our videos. Like, one of the videos right now will get, you know, 40,000, whatever. Yeah, but 4K, I mean... 4K is good. It's pretty good. Yeah. I just think, like... Cause I, I, I've, I've talked with some people in the space that are like big time. Like I know like the footballers will do, yeah. you know, they'll get like 80 K on a video, but they'll get like 500,000 downloads yeah. on audio. And I'm like, we're the fucking opposite. Yeah. Of that, you know? So it's like, for me, I kind of look at that number and I'm like, it's just a secondary effect for people that I know would rather listen to audio than mm -hmm. video. And that's where I always get like people leaving reviews that are like, I can't listen to this in my car with my kid. Cause you won't stop cursing. And shit. <laughs> I'm like, it is what it be. It is what it is. Um, um, but yeah, importance of the platform. Uh, James Harden was in China while we were all asleep and, and came out and said that he will never play for uh, an organization that employs Daryl Morey, who's the general manager. Sounds like, you know, maybe a little disagreement Sixers. between the two. Um, but it's just, it's a very interesting point in time. You've got the player empowerment era, which I will say, the player has always had these normal outlets. The only thing that they're really empowered by is the fact that they have freedom to their own platform. So James Hart did not decide to put it out on his own platform, but Mark Jackson's trade request was put out on his own platform. Um, you know, Kevin Durant, he used someone else's platform, but you could see the importance of that when he announced his decision to go to Golden State. Obviously, players are able to defend and promote their own platforms, and I just thought that one was really interesting, especially because Daryl Morey actually has a little bit of a Twitter presence, so I was curious if he would kind of battle it out in the social sphere. Did he? Or, no, he didn't. Uh, which bums Sad. me out, yeah. but uh, you know, I was kind of hoping for it. But it really, it really does show the importance in having a platform. And you know, James Harden, the way he used his platform, obviously he knew it would be picked up by saying that. But an hour after it got picked up, he just tweeted four photos and was like having a great time in China. Like I'm good. Yeah. Like come mess with me, type energy. And, you know, however you want to use your platform is your own choice, but it, it is valuable to have one. Yeah, I mean, the platform is just leverage in a million different types of ways. And it's also like with James Harden, it, it's weird because I feel like back in the day, most people didn't have, it was very hard to have platforms. Just yeah. a very select few people had platforms. And then as platforms kind of diversified and there's so many of them, it's almost like now these companies that held all the power, it, it's not just like, it's like they do have to make decisions based off of now the public yeah. view on these things. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, James Harden's like trashing us. Like we have to do what he wants, mm -hmm. but the public starts to get behind people. It humanizes them. It gets behind people. And then they make enough of an impact to where it becomes, you know, yeah. problematic. So I don't know. It's, it, it's an interesting time. I, there are to be clear, no one's really on James Harden's side. It's sure, like his sure. fourth trade yeah. request yeah. in the last like two he, years. Yeah, it's like he's been on ten different teams. Yeah. What is he doing right now? Yeah, he just tries different trade requests, and this was one of his new new, new moves in his bag. Yeah, yeah, I love um, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's it's something that like I feel I, I kind of I kind of on a on a personal level here. I guess like one of the interns, Matt, who's got um, been here for the summer, he's taking a full time job at ESPN, which starts in October. So I'm, you know, I'm upset that he's leaving because he was someone that I really enjoy working with and I see a lot of potential in him and his, I guess, reasoning behind it was like, you know, it's ESPN, which, you know, I have no fault. Like I wish him the best of fucking luck and he's mm -hmm. going to dominate. I'm happy that he found an offer that he like really wanted to be a part of. 
my thing was like, I, I was kind of countering to, to make him think a little bit differently. And I'm like saying to him, cause he's saying getting ESPN on the resume is like such a nice stepping stone to it have is. to go wherever I want. And I don't disagree with that at all. My thing was like, in terms of building a platform, like look at, look at what you're already doing within a yeah. month of being here. By the time, if you stay here for two years, your you know your followers on a plat on TikTok might be a hundred k. Like, do you know the leverage that you're gonna have in that position? Like, you'll be able to be hired wherever you want. Yeah. Like, I'll probably by that time have a network of people where I can kind of put you in a, a plenty of different places, or at least suggest a job to you. You know, or ESPN will want you. But that it was won't, my. It won't be to do what you're getting hired to do. It'll be something you probably. Yeah, and I, I I I feel weird kind of even putting this on camera because like this is the conversation that me and him had, but yeah. that 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 was realistically like. I, I'm try, I, I want younger people to understand what building leverage means nowadays. And it does mean having your own presence and having your own personal brand. And you get looked at differently in the eyes of people like us, because we've known that you, that you put in the work and you, and you have leverage over to us, you know, like I want you to stay here because you've built up this goodwill with the audience. You build up your personal brand. And it's like, it's, it's not an easy thing to come by. It's not an easy thing to build up in today's world where everyone is trying to like gravel for fucking leverage and, mm -hmm. and personal brand and all that kind of stuff. So leverage, you know, comes at in all shapes and sizes, but you can start building at any point. And I think in today's world, most of it starts through making content. Yep. That is big content. Girl. Uh, as we, if we ever start to figure out how we want to do this show, we'll probably <laughs> tell you in the beginning to subscribe or share with a friend. But if you made it this far, please do us a favor and do that. Happy birthday soon. We got one more episode before your birthday. Uh, Yeah, I think so. Next uh, Friday is my birthday. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to use your birthday wish on Marlon's foot selfishly. So you can, I'll use my birthday wish on yeah, Marlon's foot. Too. I'm, I'm going to, I'll make a sign like any birthday wishes are from Marlon's foot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Ten minutes left to take a pick. I hate slows. They're like undoable. Super flex. Really? Yeah. Sick. I fucking absolutely went to battle with them to try to get a fucking Avi with our own thing. Yeah. Get a bow tie, just like our logo, like right on the dog. I yeah. designed it myself, and it looked great. And they're like, we can't do it till next year. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, Why? it's a tough fucking implementation. I was like, I think you're lying to me, but we have one. I know. It makes me fucking angry when I see it in there every time. How long did it take to get that done? Like a day, say. 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe it was longer, but they are working on a lot right now. Oh, dude, I know. Completely yeah. the bottom of the fucking totem, yeah, yeah, yeah. totem pole. Yes and no. Yes and no. That's the thing. What's the thing? Let me make my pick. Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. Why don't you? Wait, I have an idea. No, I'm drafting. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I'm at, what? I want you to. I want you to break some. I want you to leak something. Oh, what do you want? I want me you to leak on Twitter saying I'm having conversations with other companies. Because of the really? bow, because of the bow tie. Oh, because of the bow tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and tag Zach Powell. I'll give you the Twitter name to tag. No, Zach's my boy. I would never. Yeah, exactly. I'm, this is good for him. No, no, no. Trust I don't me. think you're understanding. I'm team them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want what's best for them. Right, which is which is the this bow tie. Yeah, yeah. Well, on a more serious note, on a, what? Oh, you're being completely serious. I'm like gonna drop them. Yeah. <laughs> no, on a very serious note. Not that this wasn't serious. I do think that, you know, you drive users to the platform. And this is one of those things that makes you feel more together and with the platform. It, like makes me feel like a psycho when you put it that way. No, I like, look, if they if they pulled the snapback headband from the site, everything would be fine. But it's a nice touch, especially also it's it is super meaningful to us because as they grow, we benefit in a very small capacity, but in a very, you know, it's like right now the, you know, the FanDuel same game parlay is promoted by their talent, like McAfee, who it used to be, or Bill Simmons, like it makes you look more legit. Yeah. And and, and plus, because you, you and we have been in there kind of for the, since the ground floor. Right. So it's like when you get in that early, you seem, you know. 100%. Yeah. And so. then you're like, it is cool if I get in a draft and someone has a snapback headband. It's I like, see it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I want, I've wanted well, one of those so you bad. You know, there are two headbands that look very similar. Like, there's no. a head. Oh, yeah. You probably see the regular headband. What's the regular headband from? Ours is Ninja. 
So the regular is just a regular headband. Yeah, I don't think I ever actually looked too deep. I always just right. thought you it just, was yours. Yeah, which uh, is nice for us too. Interesting. Yeah. You just, it well, no, it gets me fired up. Yeah, it gets me doing shit like picking Desmond Ritter at like the three five <laughs> <laughs> to prove a point. Yeah, it gets me real fired up. Um, I wanted it bad. I I think what it is is like the when did you ask them? A couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's on you. Respectfully. I mean, no. If you asked in 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 May or June, you would have. They had came to me with the idea of the tournament, and I said, "Why don't we let everybody in our audience that joins get the bow tie?" Right. I set it up for them. I designed it myself. I think the problem is that there's so many designs. Yeah. There's so many different dogs and stuff. They got to fit on. They each got to fit on each one. So that's like a whole design. They project. could do it if if you were important enough, they would do it. But what I I'm agree. Saying, I agree. I, if Nick Rudman thought I was important enough, exactly. I would do it. But what I'm saying is, I think they actually should think you're important enough. Thank you. That's my feeling. Leak it. Leak it. Because you told me what that check was. so and That was light work. That, yeah. That'll be our fourth biggest check of the year. Woo! 